In this problem, we're going to figure out the acceleration of something where we have uh, uh, a pulley like that, and one side is hanging a mass m, and from the other side is hanging a mass 4m. Setups like this are called an Atwood machine. So this was used to study early studies of kinematics and measurements of the acceleration due to gravity. And we have a very cool Atwood machine. So here is our department's Atwood machine. Very old, probably about as old as the building. But I can't really use it as a demo, unfortunately, for two reasons. One is it doesn't work. So I don't know, I could probably fix it if I had, you know, six months to spare. And two is I can't actually get it out of the door anymore. So the building has settled around the Atwood machine and we can't even bring it into the lecture hall. So, so we're just going to have to do the Atwood machine uh, theoretically. We'll do the theoretical version without the demonstration. So the critical points you want to remember here are that tension is constant throughout the setup, throughout. Remember, uh, a, a pulley, if we're thinking of it as massless and frictionless, then it will perfectly transmit the tension. So we have the same tension here that we have here. So to figure out how this accelerates, we really just apply Newton's laws to each one of these. We do a free body diagram on this mass and one on this mass, and we just see what we get. So let's see, but let's think about coordinates as well. It's always good. This one we can do in Cartesian coordinates if we want, because everything is basically just moving up and down. It's really a one-dimensional uh, system. So let's see, let's do M. So if we think just a free body diagram on M, well, the weight pulling it down is Mg. And it's being pulled up by tension T. We don't know what it is yet. So we could write the uh, sum of the forces and the Y equals mass times the acceleration on the Y. If you're ever just completely lost on how to do a problem, just write Newton's second law. That'll, it's probably the first step. So the forces in the Y, we have tension T up because the string doesn't have tension, but it applies a tension force to an object. And so here it's up. And then minus mg down, and that equals uh, the mass ma. Right? So we can't solve for tension because we don't know the tension and we don't know the acceleration. Right? This is not a static problem where this side is zero. We're actually going to have this thing. It's clearly going to accelerate if you have any intuition for this sort of thing. Uh, let's see, let's do the 4m, the larger mass. Let's see, free body diagram, it also has tension T pulling up. It has 4mg pulling down, larger force pulling down. Right. So some of the forces in the y equals the mass times the acceleration in the y. So in this case, uh, tension pulls up minus 4 mg down equals 4m. So here, here and here, it's the, it's the general mass from Newton's second law, and I'm plugging in the actual mass. So that's why I switched that to that. Here, it's the general mass from Newton's second law, and I'm plugging in 4m. Sorry, that got a little ambiguous. And it's the same a, except it's negative, right? It's in the negative direction. So we know we're going to assume that this will accelerate down while this accelerates up. We're assuming a few things as we go in here. And if we do that, if we assume they're opposite directions because of the action of the pulley, then we can use the same A. Right, it's the same magnitude we're putting in the direction. Okay. So what do we have? We have two equations and two unknowns. Right? The unknowns are the tension and the acceleration. And the equations are right there, one for each mass. So the quickest way to solve this one, it looks like I just equated the tensions because we were asked for the acceleration. Right, so we could say uh, mg plus ma. This tension equals uh, 4 mg minus 4 ma. Right, and that all looks correct. So now we just solve for acceleration. All the m's go away. And uh, let's see, we're solving for acceleration, so why don't we bring uh, these four A's over here and have 5A uh, and bring this G over here equals 3G. So we see, ah, the acceleration is 3 fifths G. 
All right, and that is even correct. So it accelerates at three-fifths the acceleration of gravity. That's another thing, and that would machine can do for you, is it can let you study acceleration and like slow it down. You don't have to have 9.8 meters per second squared. You get two masses similar to each other, and you get much slower accelerations for more precise measurements. We could also get T. The tension is the same in each uh, side of the cable. And oh, if A is 3 fifths G, it'd be easiest to get it from here. We're at MA plus MG. So it's 3 fifths G plus 5 fifths G. It's 8 fifths G. Oh, MG. Right. So the tension is somewhere between the weight of this one and the weight of that one.